All right, guys, I watched uh, Tokyo Story on the Criterion Collection Blu-ray uh, not too long ago, and I took some notes on it, and I just want to talk about this movie. It's regarded as one of the greatest movies of all time. I guess uh, a friend that I used to work with uh, who went to a film school said he had to watch it, and um, he thought on the International Movie Database that it was the number one for a long time. Maybe it still is, I don't know. But I know a lot of people say Citizen Kane is one of the best movies of all time, too. And I've still yet to watch that, but uh, I, was, I thought it was really cool. This has a Criterion Collection uh, version of it, and it comes with this little booklet in here. Some pictures from the movie. And it's got some extras. I haven't really checked out the extras yet, but the quality of this Blu-ray was really great. I'll say that. And uh, maybe I'll use some of these pictures for going over what I'm talking about in the movie so I can point out some of the characters. But... Uh, it's really, really nice. Um, so I'm going to be going on a trip to Japan, I guess, and visiting Tokyo. And so that made me kind of interested in this, too. Um, but anyway, it's a really, really good movie. And I was looking at the reviews on Rotten Tomatoes, and it has like 100% for the critics' score and pretty high for the uh, users or the whatever else, too. But it... Um, one of the reviewers said something about this movie might not be the greatest movie ever, but it is a perfect movie, and you know I can definitely agree with that. It's always just subjection. What is the greatest movie of all time? One of my, I always say my favorite movie is Sling Blade. You know, I love that movie, but um, this is definitely up there in the top categories of movies, and uh, it did make me pretty emotional. So I got invested into the story, into the characters, and um, it was made in 1953. And, I mean, the quality was so good on this Blu-ray, it's like they could have recorded it today in 2020. And uh, so the the audio is in Japanese, um, and the, it has English subtitles. It did have a um, aspect ratio that it wasn't uh, widescreen. I couldn't figure out a way to, to do that. So, But uh, it was good enough, so... Uh, I know there's a lot of people that might not like black and white movies, and I don't know why, because they're really beautiful. And it was interesting, too, that there's even a black and white version of some modern movies, like Mad Max came out with a black and white version. Um, and But anyways, there's a lot of good black and white movies. There's a lot of good foreign movies where you have subtitles, and a lot of people just don't want to read and they think it's just going to be a drag, but once you really get into them, you know, you can learn to love them, and you can realize that there's a lot of great movies out there with subtitles. Um, I even like silent films, you know, with no no subtitles, no no talking, like, um, I think the uh, Duck Soup with the Marx Brothers, I think that was a silent movie, if, I'm, if I remember right, it was hilarious. But, anyways, basically the story follows uh, these grandparents, and uh, so that's them on the cover, the grandpa and the grandma. And they're going to go visit their children in Tokyo. They have five children all together, but one of their children was dead. So they only have four living. And uh, two, one of them lives with them, and um, her name is Kyoko. And she's uh, a young daughter. And, um, and then there's uh, Kizo. I don't know if I'm going to pronounce these names right, but... They have a son who lives in Osaka, I think, and which is somewhat closer to them than, than Tokyo. They live in uh, Onomochi, Onimichi. I don't know exactly where all these locations are, but so they live in Onimichi. They got to go to Tokyo, and uh, they their daughter Kyoko lives with them, and they leave she, they leave her behind. She stays there to watch over the house, and. They want to meet their son, I think, at the train station in Osaka, but I think that he's busy or something, and they don't they don't meet him. Uh, he's their youngest son, but they go they're going to Tokyo to meet um, their eldest daughter, CJ Sige. I don't know how you spell that. Shige, S H I G E, and she's a hairdresser, and I think she's she's married, has a husband, and they they go to meet uh, their oldest son. Koichi, K-O-I-C-H-I, he's a pediatrician, I think he's married and has two sons, 
So they have grandchildren. They have these two sons. And also uh, their daughter-in-law, Noriko, lives there. And she was the wife of their deceased son. Uh, and their son, um, who died, was lost or missing in action in the army. And he, I guess he never came home. So they never really confirmed that he was dead. But they just assumed that he was. And this is like eight years after his death. So they're going to meet the family. They haven't seen him for a long time. And... Uh, they go, and so that's basically what this movie follows, is their, their time in, in, in Tokyo. Uh, these, this, so the grandparents are the main characters. Noriki, uh, the daughter-in-law, is one of the main characters, and she is a godsend. She's like an angel. She brings, you know, a lot of the most emotional moments of this movie to me, and uh, she's really one of the main characters, too. Um, so, let's see here. See, the grandsons are kind of a little bit spoiled, or they're a little bit stubborn, or bratty. I mean, not too bad, but it's, uh, like their mother says that the, the oldest son, uh, they had to move his desk to accommodate for the grandparents coming, and he's like, well, you know, how am I going to study with my desk moved? And he's, you know, he gets kind of bratty about that. She's like, well, you don't, you don't study anyway. But, uh, so they throw a little fit, but... The grandparents arrive in Tokyo, and they come to their son's house, who is the pediatrician who has the two sons and everything, and so they basically all meet up there, um, and they just catch up and stuff, and so the next morning they're going to go out as a family, and uh, I guess maybe tour Tokyo or something, and um, but their son, who's a pediatrician, has a call for work, so he has to leave, and they can't go out, because uh, he says that, you know, somebody has to stay at the house to watch the house, so they can't all leave, and uh, the sons were really excited to go out, so this is another time when they get kind of bratty, and they throw things, and they're like, you always say next time, you know, we never get to, we never get to go out, and, um, and the mother says, you know, you must be embarrassed in our grandchildren, or whatever, and grandfather's like oh not really you know you know their father was like that and you know we understand you know he says they're lively that's the way he puts it um and so the grandmother decides to take the grandsons out for a walk outside or she takes the youngest one anyway and there's a little bit of emotional time with him where she's kind of playing with him and she says, you know, I don't know if I'll get to see you grow old to be a doctor like your father, you know. And so we learn that kind of time is precious and, you know, you never know when's going to be your last time, you know, seeing your family or a loved one. And, you know, it's a little bit emotional at that moment. The grand, uh, and this movie is, you know, it's kind of slow, like it has a steady pace, so I don't want to say it's like slow and boring. It kept me interested the whole time. You know, it wasn't boring at all to me. It's a lot of dialogue. It's just a lot of character study, and uh, it's just about life. And, you know, it doesn't rush anything, though. It does, you know, it gave me time to take a bunch of notes. And these are the notes that I got for it here. Two pages back in front, and I just kind of wrote what was going on and tried to uh, make, you know, point out certain things about certain scenes. Anyway, so the whole time there is kind of disappointing. Like, their, their grandchildren, their biological grandchildren are too busy for them, really. They've, they've got careers and their own kids and stuff, and they always have to work, and they can't really spend the quality time with their, their parents that came to visit them, you know. Um, so, and while the, while the grandmother's playing with the little son, and, and she's talking about her grandson, she's talking about how, she might not see him grow up. There's, like, violin playing. So there's really good music. I don't know if it's violin, maybe a stringed instrument, but it's really, like, emotional, sad, like that, kind of. There's a lot of moments like that, and the music is just really good. You know, a lot of times it's kind of in the background, but it just feels natural. Uh, you know, there's some upbeat music. There's some songs with lyrics in them. And the cinematography and the way this movie is filmed is really great. There's a lot of scenes where, you know, after certain scenes where they discuss things, it goes away, and you see different uh, scenery in Tokyo, and the way that the shadows are with the black and white. You see different structures, and they just look really beautiful. Um, and and throughout this movie, there's a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of dialogue. 
there's some subtle humor. There's some bickering kind of back and forth between the couples and stuff like that. And, you know, with the kids being bratty and, you know, there's sad stuff and there's serious talk and there's just contemplating. And there's, uh, you know, like at the very beginning when the grandparents are getting ready to travel and he's kind of like, where's, you know, where's this item? Uh, it's supposed to be in your bag or whatever. And, you know, she says it's not here. And he's like, well, it's supposed to be there. And, you know, kind of throws a little bit of a fuss about it. And then he ends up finding it. Oh, here it is. And so just kind of like how couples bicker. And it's a little bit, a little bit of humor there. Uh, she's constantly, the grandma's constantly kind of leaving things behind or forgetting them. Um, let's see here. So it ends up being uh, Noriko, the one who I said is a godsend, the one who is their daughter-in-law. She ends up taking them out um, for a tour, and uh, she they, takes them on a bus to see the Imperial Palace, which looks really cool, and um, she gets them sake, sake to drink, um, so she really accommodates them. Uh, she takes off the day of work for this. So while her, their biological children are too busy and they're going to work to, to spend time away from their parents, uh, their daughter-in-law is, uh, you know, taking off work to spend time with them. And they talk and, and they go to her place and they drink sake and they see a picture of their dead son and, son and uh, you know, they ask, you know, why does she keep this picture up? Um, they really want her to move on with her life and to marry and to be happy. They think that she's sad and she tells them, you know, I'm, I'm happy this way, I'm happy this way. I don't know what that sound is. Computer fan or something. <laughs> it's really dusty in here. Anyway, uh, so moving on. Um, she feeds them. I notice that she fans them. A, a lot of times in the movie they're using these fans and they're fanning themselves. And uh, they're sitting on the floor a lot. Uh, you know, like we call it in the Indian position with their legs crossed, sitting down. And, uh, so they're using these fans like all throughout the movie. And I noticed that she fa she was fanning them. And uh, later on I kind of wonder, because of a certain scene, do they use these fans to cool off? Or is it kind of like a stress relief thing where they just gets their mind off of things or whatever. Um, I don't know. That's something I kind of want to look into. Well, they also, their daughter, uh, one of their biological daughters, I think the hairdresser, tells them that they should go see the uh, hot springs, the Atami hot springs, and stay in a hotel there. And so they think they're just going to spend money on their parents to take them out to these lavish places so they can enjoy their time in Tokyo. You know, instead of wanting to spend quality time with them, they're thinking, you know, let's treat them really well and, and and have them do these things in Tokyo so they can experience that. And while they're there, um, they're trying to sleep at night and there's gambling going on like next in the next room or something and it's really loud and they they can't really sleep. And they're sitting up and they're like fanning themselves really fast and that's why I, I wondered if the fanning was just kind of like a stress relief thing. Uh, so they're kind of upset, so you get kind of the idea that their whole visit's kind of crappy in a way, uh, but they, except for their time with Noriko, Noriko um, let's go on to the next page here, I wrote that it's a very heartwarming movie, a lot of feel-good moments in it, uh, the grandparents are getting homesick after, you know, this hot spring thing they're, they're talking about, you know, maybe we should just go back home now, you know, uh, not really enjoying it here. You know, they say the hot springs is more for the younger crowd. Uh, and as they're getting ready to leave, the grandma says that she's feeling dizzy, you know, so it's kind of like, uh oh, you know, hopefully she's going to be okay. Uh, they return from the hot springs early and to their hairdresser daughter, and she's very upset and uh, one of her clients, who she's cutting her hair or whatever, I think she, she says, who are they when her parents walk in? And she says, oh, they're just friends. I thought that's kind of rude. Like, she doesn't even say that's my parents or whatever. She was so upset that they came back and, like, bothered her while she was at work. And um, 
So she asked, uh, let's see here. Said she did fan her mom with the fan too. Um, she wants to take him to Kabuki, she says, and she wanted to, to plan this while they were at the hot springs, so they kind of upset her plans. Um, and they decide where they're going to stay. They don't know really where they're going to stay. And um, they decide that the grandma is going to stay with Nariko, and uh, the grandpa is going to stay with one of his buddies, the scribe, um, Hitori. And um, apparently it was someone who he was friends with who lived in the town that they lived in, and he moved to Tokyo or something like that. So he goes to catch up with old friends, basically, to stay with them. And uh, this guy... And, and this guy said that he sent him a card, like, every new year. Uh, so they stayed in contact. They were good friends. And he tells him that this old uh, retired police chief that they knew, like, lived next door or whatever, and they should all go out and catch up. Uh, so they go out, and they drink. And apparently uh, the grandpa was a drinker before, but he had quit. And so he drinks with them while he's enjoying his time with them catching up uh, because, you know, the police chief keeps wanting them to take shots of sake or whatever he's really into drinking and uh they so they talk a lot discuss things and uh i think the police chief says that when you're it's strange that when your children are gone you miss them but when you're around them it's like you're a nuisance to them basically and he talks about his own son um the grandpa's friend who knew the police chief told him that the police chief's son had like a really big time job that he was doing really good he was the head of some company. And um, so the police chief kind of says he's disappointed in his son. And, you know, the grandfather's like, well, why are you disappointed? Like, he's doing great. He has a great career. And, you know, the chief police says, oh, it's a lie. He's not doing that great. He's just kind of like a scrub or whatever, and he's disappointed in him. And um, the grandpa says he's a little bit disappointed in his son, too. But uh, he, he says, you know, we shouldn't expect too much of our children or we'll be greedy and Will never be satisfied with where they are in life. Uh, so these grandparents are very humble. Uh, so the grandma is with Noriko, the daughter-in-law, who's really kind, and they have a close time together. Uh, you see that Noriko is massaging the grandma's shoulders, um, and the grandma says that you know she thinks that she's a burden to everyone. She says, "Why do you keep your dead husband's photo?" You're young, you should get married. It makes it makes us sad that you're not with somebody. And she says um, she says that she's happy, but then the grandmother says, yeah, but as you get older, you're going to get lonely. And uh, that part made me a little bit lad. La <laughs> so that part made me a little bit sad when that happened. It's kind of another violin moment there. Um, a police officer brings uh, the drunk grandpa and his buddies to the hairdresser's place uh, because they're so trash, you know, they, they got brought home by the police. And she is really upset about him coming home drunk. Uh, she's talking to her husband, saying that, you know, he quit drinking for a long time and he became a different man, so it upsets her that he's drinking again. She says, I hate drunkards, and she's just really upset, and I thought it was kind of funny how frustrated she is because she's just making noises, you know, Arr! she's just... So upset, so inconvenienced by her, her drunken father. And uh, we go back to Noriko with her mother-in-law, and uh, she's she gives her spending money. So she's even kind enough to give her money. And she says very she's very sweet and very generous, and this part made me really sad, just to see how kind she was. And even though, you know, she she wasn't one of their biological children, but she did so much for them. And she lived alone, you know, she didn't have children, her husband died, and you gotta think that, you know, she must be kind of sad, but she was just so kind to them, and it makes you, you know, like somebody who you want to aspire to be like, it's like somebody who we'd all want in our lives to have some kind of people like that, and, um, so the grandma says, you know, I want you to visit me, you know, where we live and she says you know it's too far the grandma says you know she won't be back to tokyo you know this is like a one-time deal basically they're getting old and this is going to be it and i noticed that noriko calls her mother and she calls 
the uh, father to father, you know, even though they're her, uh, not her biological parents, she refers to him as that. So we see him, they're going to get ready to leave. The grandparents are at the train station, and um, they're supposed to go through Osaka, but they had to stop there because the grandma's feeling sick, and she's 68 years old. And Osaka is where their youngest son, Kizo, is. And he says he had to call the doctor twice and borrow blankets. And he said, what a bother, because he was really inconvenienced by this. Uh, and I think they're staying with him or something. I'm not really sure. Um, or his place or something. Uh, they, they're, they're talking. The grandparents are talking. And uh, they say that the trip made them like their children more. But it's also... Uh, they noticed how they have changed, how they used to be so nice and stuff, and now they get upset easily and stuff like that. But they say that they're very lucky to have these children, and overall, I guess they kind of were glad that they went there. Um, well, the family back in Tokyo, the I think the pediatrician son, gets a telegram that the mother is chronically ill. And so they call Noriko at work to give the news, uh, the son and daughter want to hurry to visit, but they have arrangements, and I think another telegram comes or something like that, and they decide, okay, we're going to leave tonight. So, you know, at first they're kind of reluctant to go because of business, again, holding them back, but, uh, you know, they decide, you know, we better go. Um, it doesn't sound good because she's chronically ill. And uh, so we see the grandma laying down, and she's got, like, an ice pack on her head or something. She's basically, like, on her deathbed. She's laying there dying. The father's there. Kyoko, their young daughter that at the beginning of the movie, is with them. And um, she gets up to go and meet the family as they arrive from the train. So all the people from Tokyo come to visit them. Um, and the... Let's see. The son and daughter arrive, and... Uh, and the youngest son, Kizo, the one who lives in Osaka, is not there because he's away from business. And so the one that's the closest there is not there. And they're like, where is he and stuff? He's late. The son who is doctor has a talk with the father and his sister and says uh, he's very worried. He thinks that she's going to die before tomorrow. He thinks that you know, this is going to be it. And so the father says, so this is the end. He says, so this is the end. Uh, and CJ or CJ, Shige, the uh, hairdresser one that was, you know, the one that got frustrated, the one that was upset that they came back early, the one that was upset that her grandpa came, or her father came home drunk. Uh, she was the one that was crying the hardest. She just starts bawling. Uh, and then we find out the grandma dies. She's dead. And um, her face is covered with a cloth. Finally, Kizo, the one from the youngest one from Osaka, arrives. And he was out of town on business, he says. And uh, their other son says, Kizo, look at her, uh, look at her face or see how, see how peaceful she is. Oh yeah, by the way, there's going to be spoilers in this. It might be a little bit late, but you know, I'm just kind of going over the plot. I know I'm talking about the whole movie, but uh, you know, maybe this isn't how a review is supposed to be done, but I'm just reading over this trying to remember, you know, uh, even though I just watched it a minute ago, kind of what happened and to share this with you. Um, Anyways, they're, they're like, where's the father? The father's gone. And uh, so Noriko, the kind one, goes outside and sees that he's looking at the sunrise. He's talking about how the day is going to be hot today and stuff. They have the funeral ceremony. It seems like some kind of a Buddhist ceremony or something. They're like playing drums and, and, and uh, kind of chanting. Kizo, the young son, leaves the room. He says he can't stand the sound. Noriko goes out and gets him to come back in. Afterwards, the family's eating. They're sharing memories. Uh, as the father leaves the room, the Shige says that she wishes the father died first because he will be alone now, and they could have taken care of mother if, if she would have died. And so uh, I don't know why they said they couldn't have taken care of the father. Maybe it's just because he is too stubborn and he wouldn't want to or something. I don't know. Uh, but the father thanks all for coming. Everyone's leaving. And they say, you know, Noriko, will she stay for a while? The father says she might as well leave too. We notice that he's drinking again. 
And Noriko does stay for a little bit. She makes Kyoko lunch, and Kyoko says uh, that the others are selfish. So Kyoko is the younger daughter who was with them in the beginning. The one she doesn't live in Tokyo, and she uh, she just she she says you know Noriko is so great, and um, she's just so disappointed at her siblings in Tokyo for just coming and leaving and being so disrespectful. How she felt that you know even strangers would have been more considerate. Uh, to their mother and father, and um, that they were just full of themselves. And uh, Noriko explains to her how, you know, children pull away from their parents as they get older, and they have their own things in life that they have to deal with. And and so Kyoko says, life is disappointing, isn't it? And, and she says, yes, it is. And she says, you know, she asks Noriko if she will also, you know, end up like them or whatever, and she says, yes, I probably will. Uh, so, um, uh, Noriko asks Kyoko to please come to Tokyo, um, uh, Noriko is the last to leave, uh, she goes and talks to the father, because Kyoko's gone, so Noriko, the daughter-in-law, who's the kindest one, is the last one with the father, and, uh, he tells her that being, that the mother being with Noriko was her happiest time in Tokyo. And uh, she wants her to remarry. And uh, and he says that she's just so kind, she's so great, even better than their own biological children, how, how she treated them with respect and everything. And, and she says, she tries to say, you know, no, I'm not that great, I'm selfish. She says, you know, there's many days where I don't think about your your dead son, even though the, f the picture's up there. She feels guilty about this, and he says it's good. He says, I don't want you to think about my son. I want you to move on. And um, he ends up giving her this watch, and, um, you know, he says, even though we have children of our own, you've done the most for us. But he, he ends up giving the mother... The mother's watch to her, this pocket watch that she had when he said when she was about her age, and uh, she cries when she gets it. And some of the last things that we see is Kyoko watching the train leave with Noriko. Noriko's looking at the watch, and um, the father at the end says that he wishes he would have been kinder to her if he would have known that it was so sudden. Because he's talking to a neighbor who we see in the beginning, too, before they leave. This neighbor talks to him, and this neighbor comes and says, Yeah, you're going to be lonely now, right? And he says, Yeah, you know, I wish that I would have been more kind to her. And so it makes us think about that. You know, I think about this stuff all the time. Let me show you some of these pictures, I guess, too. So this is the grandpa. This is the father in the end that's, you know, by himself. This is the mother. And I don't know their names, if I can even pronounce them. Uh, so... I'm not going to worry about that. That's why I haven't really referred to their names in a little bit. And this is at the end where, uh, this is Noriko, the really kind daughter-in-law, and this is the father after the uh, mother's death, and they say, where is he? He's outside looking at the sunrise. That's when she comes out with him and sees that. Uh, this is their hairdresser daughter over here, and I think that's her husband. Um, this might be the wife of their pediatrician son. Um, that's another scene with the mother. Here's the scene with the train. I think the train leaving with Noriko at the end, I think. Um, let's see what else we got here. Anything else? Hmm. This, uh, this might be when they're on the tour bus. That's the that's the grandmother and that's Noriko with them, and uh, maybe that's him on the bus too, the grandfather. So looks like he took him to tour around. I don't know why it doesn't have their uh, other son, the doctor on here, but it's just got some random pictures. But. This is the scene where after the hot springs, where they're deciding that they're homesick and they're going to leave, that's the grandparents. And as they're walking back on this path here, uh, that's when she feels dizzy. And after, you know, she dies, he kind of thinks back to that. He's like, oh yeah, there was a time when she felt dizzy, like maybe, maybe that was the beginning of it or whatever. 
Really great movie. Um, there's more pictures in here. In the background, in this case, it's really beautiful. You can see just the beautiful, you know, shots of just the insides of the buildings and the outside area. That's when the grandma, that's when the grandma's playing with the the son, saying that she doesn't know. You know, she'll get to see him grow older. It's definitely a movie I'd watch again. It's definitely a movie I want other people to see. It's a movie I think that anybody could enjoy. And while I watched this movie, I used these new headphones. And uh, I got these headphones donated, and I got this movie donated too, and I'm very grateful, brother, for you who gave this to me. And um, these headphones are great. They're Turtle Beach uh, Stealth 600 series. They're um, completely wireless. I use it with my Xbox, what I watch it on. And uh, they have a microphone, and uh, it's just so cool having wireless headphones, and they're really comfortable. And I was able to walk into the other room and stuff, and uh, it's got a good range. I'm sure I could be anywhere in my apartment and, and listen. And um, but you know, the sound quality is really great, and uh, it's nice because I live in an apartment and I don't have surround sound. And, you know, I, I don't particularly want to get it because I can't even really listen to stuff really loud. You know, I don't want to disturb other people. I don't want them listening to loud music and disturbing me. So try to be respectful. And, you know, so the sound just comes out of the TV. And sometimes, you know, it's just not that great. And so I want to experience the movie really good. And, and so that's um, these, these headphones are great for that. You know, not the only reason that I have them. But it is, you know, it's a really good bonus to be able to listen to movies and privacy on those. So I do, would suggest those because there are some reviews going around that say that these are bad, but these were great for me. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, like I said, the, the scene where she was being really kind, where Noriko was being really kind to the grandmother, giving her money and stuff, and the grandmother's like, I should be the one giving you money, not this way. And she's like, no, no, I want you to have this. And just the way the music is, just the way... You know, the story's been going, just the way the characters are, and it's like, man, I don't know why, but that just really struck me. You know, even more so than when the uh, grandma died, you know, it, that that wasn't quite as sad to me. A little bit sad, but it was really just these emotional moments where, where she was alive and they, they had this time together. I don't know, there's so much more that I should say about it, but we're already at 30 minutes, so it's a really good movie. I definitely suggest checking that out. It would definitely be like a 10 out of 10 if it was going to be on a rating scale of a 10 or something. You know, it's definitely an A-plus film. So, that's it. God bless, guys.